The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida. Joined this morning by our man Basil Chapman, filling in for Tom. Basil, good morning. Good morning to you. How I'll, are you? I'm doing well, man. It's Friday. We got markets at all-time highs, right? Ringing in the bell as we come into the weekend. And folks, we got the Dow up 142 points right now, more than half a percent, trading 27,230. S&P is positive by five, trading at 3,005. NASDAQ positive by 22 points, trading at 82.18. Green across the board this morning, Basil. We got a, a PPI number, a little bit of producer price increase of 0.1%. Uh, to go along with that CPI data yesterday, a little bit hot. Uh, so the market, okay with that, though, as we march on to higher prices. And um, we'll see where the day goes. It kind of just seems like a continuation, in my opinion, of kind of the week and, and, and the, the, the market just chugging higher. And we'll see where we go. Not a ton of news to really hit the market today if we, uh, as we creep into the weekend with positive sentiment. It's interesting that the PPI was just up a fraction when, in fact, the wheat, corn, and soy have had very strong moves from the recent lows. Well, it's not so recent anymore. Let me see where wheat was. Yeah, this has been um, eight weeks, nine weeks of uh, a rally in uh, wheat. Yeah. And it's gone. I mean, it's up. <laughs> no, it's huge. gone from the four, the four, 420 area up to the 545. Uh, I mean, that's that's big. So it's amazing when you put that chart. We'll it. I'm just looking at the monthly. It's like amazing though how that still is almost in a downtrend on a monthly with that type of a move, um, just because of where now we. Now you now you can see the Look downtrend. At that. Look, at Look at that. Look at that. And I'm going back even further. I'm going how back. Far right now, I'm going back to 2010. 1408. Wow. This is a continuous contract. But sure. Still that. right. Yeah. So even this rally is just merely a little blip. Yeah. On the downside, a percentage term. Well, this is the interesting thing. You can see that in the in the gold stocks when they were uh, so low and they go to the single digits, they don't have to rally very much to get a really big percentage. Yes. When you when you, but it's the same thing here. So it's off off the 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 highs, but still only at 522. But I, I this will be reflected at some point. I think in the uh, you know in the marketplace. Sure. Sure. Um, now, Basil, can we jump over to the Dow? Because I know we had been talking yesterday, I believe, those numbers as to where we might be able to get. And we're creeping up to right right around those numbers, I believe, right? What was the number? So the number that I was looking at was initially 26999 and then 27160 as the 160. automated, okay. those the automated um, resistance points. Because of the move yesterday, I have another reading of 27296 but the way I've been looking at it, if the Dow is able to close above 27,270, what that does is it changes this a weekly chart, which I've got in leg E, and you can see that it's going above almost all the, the uh, trend line resistances. And the MACD is still very strong. The stochastic's at 89%. So that says to me, and in a way, this is, this is a good problem to have for subscribers because we've been long since the June 3rd low. So we've done nothing. I just said there's a certain something that we will do today if the Dow goes down minus uh, 40 points at any stage. Okay. Um, it's just a kind of a protection thing. But in the meantime, uh, this breakout, it seems to me, is forcing people to start looking at stocks without shaking their... I had mentioned in... Tom's show yesterday, that was a show four to five, which I, I did um, as a guest host. And I said, I can just, you know, most people that I meet who talk about the stock market shake their head and say, what the heck is going on? So it, the funny thing is, when I finished the show, I went straight off to play tennis. One of the players there looked at me and said, so what did the Dow do today? <laughs> Um, I said, uh, it closed at a record high in the 27,000s. And he shook his head 
and he used the vernacular that a lot of people have been using these days. It's a four-letter word. We won't have to use it here. And he shook his head and said, ah, that is just <clears throat> amazing. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I mean, that reaction I've had from people for the past couple of years, that they just, they, they don't understand, they don't know why. They, and I can understand if you're listening to the news, if you're listening to what the, the Fed's supposed to do and all that. But the reality is, there really isn't much else that you could put your money into. Sure. And I think that that basically makes it as simple as possible. I still think we're in an area right here with the monthly chart. It's unusual that the down the monthly chart has gone to a leg C, but the S&P, and this is, this is really hard to believe, the S&P is only in a leg A from the low that was made back in December at, uh, that was 23... Uh, 2346.38 and we're now trading at an all-time high 3003 uh, 3004 sure um, and this is still only a leg a now basil so, this is a great opportunity just uh because i i look at that chart now where um why would an a not pop up on that recent high that we had in that monthly two or three months ago you know where you get the pullback um, yes, right there on your chart. Um, well, well, let me just explain that okay. in the Chapman Wave methodology, as long as you start to make higher highs, you see this, the low that makes, when you get a low bar and you get a spike to the upside, that cannot be a new peak because sure. the peak, by, by definition, first of all, you need a trough to okay. start your peaks. And I use a floating letter. So in this particular instance, let me just get rid of this for a moment, and then and then we can do it very very clearly. Um, just trying to find it. Because man, that is quite an A leg of that in yeah, terms and, of quite a run, right? So this, once it broke above the high, I'll be, use my pointer. Oh, this is the monthly chart. Let me just expand it so we're looking apples to apples. Yeah, Perfect. this is what we're looking at. The monthly chart. And I'll move it. And I just wanted to show, show something recently that during the Obama administration, the market went up and up and up and up. And my, my, my comment constantly was, I don't know why President Obama doesn't say the market is doing well. I kind of understand why, because it wasn't, in, it wasn't in his wheelhouse. It's not what he always spoke about. And, and now, look, we've gone up and up and now with Trump. A, big, a much shakier market at this particular point. But your question is, in this particular instance here, in the Chapman Wave, you identify the lowest low bar, and then you merely count each successively uh, higher peak. But you can only start. Look, I haven't got a peak here. This is the trough from the okay. right side. I can start counting. So what we do is, as soon as it goes by this particular high that was made in December of last year, and that's the high of 20 in the S&P, 2,800.18, okay. you go to 20, you go 0.1 higher, 0.01 higher, and now you can start calling this leg A. But I usually start off with a gray A because it's under the previous high. It means, yes, it's good, but be be careful because you're under the previous high. Anything can happen. Sure. So I usually make that a gray. So now what we do is the next bar has a higher high. I still, that's called a floating letter. It means it just keeps moving. Next one has a floating high. And if you remember, the Dow had already made a peak A, and then it went higher in the S&P to leg A, and even this high, of April, of May was a higher high and was June and now we've got so this is okay, still okay we kept K. getting the highs I see I mean the red bar just jumped out at me but that makes sense when you walk it through perfect all right folks we're gonna be back in three minutes we're gonna finish this conversation we got the Dow up 152 S&P's up four record highs Basil and I'll be right back the Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. We got markets in positive territory. S&P's up about five, Dow up about 130 records as we come into a summer weekend. We actually hit 3,012 on those S&P futures this morning. Uh, so, Basil, I see you setting up. Uh, well, we're back to the Dow, or we're going to jump to so, go for let, it. Let me just. I just wanted to show you something here on the S&P. These are all the Chapman Wave automated resistance points and support levels in the different. This is the 10 minutes. This is the daily. He has the weekly in the middle. 120 minute chart over here and the monthly has um, a lot on the on the right all the bases but you can covered. see yeah so right here we've got between 316 320 and 327 there's a lot of automated resistance levels and the the whole thing about this is if you snap right through it that is really positive because these are usually very good you can see how you stalled at each one of these before you took off and look at this beautiful support level here this weekly at 27.35 so I do respect these I do my other work but I usually do this just as a check so that says in the S&P you've got that resistance in the Dow you, you you broke out of the earlier ones now you're at this upper end uh, 27296 is, is the next one and we don't have to go through all the others but it does show that it goes all the way to 28,959 in the monthly okay. at some point so that's what I like to look at and I just use it as a reference point because I do so much of the other work you can see the, the um, queues are not acting as well as the Dow yeah. the S&P is not acting as well as the Dow and look at all the resistance levels here in the QQQ, that's 193.20, 193.71. So that's just saying that there is, there is quite a bit of resistance coming up. Breaking out would be very positive. But even more important is that this is a very, it's, it's now a little more complex, this market, because um, T-bonds, have started to uh, pull back sharply. The, yes. uh, I had a, I had a sell, just a short-term sell signal in the, uh, this is the bonds themselves, the U.S. continuous contract of the 30-year T-bond made that peak D. We're always looking at Ds. Look at that sharp pullback. It really from the is, 157 yeah. to 153. We say sharp, but look at the way it's come from. Yeah. But it's the speed with which we've come down. Also, I'm a little cautious here because this is a leg this is a leg F, and by today, there's no way we're going to go above 157. Sure. So that makes us weekly 
at a peak, potential peak if, with the MAGD turning down, still good, and the stochastic still good at 85%, and the unbalanced volume and relative strength all turning down. It says, you know, be careful because those yields, uh, that, can, that can flummox the market a little bit because what the Fed's saying, what the market's doing, are two different things. Yeah, I mean, we got... Um we got that core CPI yesterday, 2.1%. I mean, the Fed's core inflation that they're looking for is 2%. So you're coming in a little hot and you get the PPI at 0.1%. And it is quite a run in terms of uh, just even I have the yield chart up here real quick and quite a run in terms of you're talking about we just went from 1.95 on July 5th. To You're talking about the tenure? Yes, the tenure. Yeah, this is. Um, I've got it right up here. We're in leg yep. B. And that's, yeah. you know, two tenths of a percent, folks, in the span of seven, eight days to the upside as we're coming into what the market perceives as a guaranteed rate cut coming on July 31st. Uh, that's quite a market in terms and of. Tommy, Tommy, look at this. This is my automated TLT Lehman 20 year Treasury bond fund. Okay. Look at that. Look at all that. Look at the resistance levels there. And it's broke right through the 13171. Yeah. So uh, this is going to be very important because, it, it, you know, it's. It's such an interesting, it's always an interesting market. That's why most of us who, who are involved in the market just are absolutely fast. Every day is a challenge because there are just so many different pieces of the puzzle. But to make it as simple as possible, um, in the TLT, I typed this in when I heard it a couple about eight weeks ago, or maybe a couple of months. Someone mentioned TINA. I thought, what is TINA? I've heard of all these different acronyms, and they said, there is no alternative. And I think that that makes it as simple as possible. You know, real estate is something very different. In a stock, you can, let's just say you have a stock worth, um, say, $80,000, right? You can press a button, and within, the, within less than a second, you're out of it. Yes. But let's just say you've got a mortgage of 80000 and you've got your real estate, and you want to get out of this. You've got to put it up for sale. You've got to get it ready. You've got to get, you know, it's, 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 it's no, I just agree. a different and then business. The, then the question comes in as to whether it's really worth 80000 because you might think it's worth 80000 but there's not an active buy or sell. So you, not only can you not See, so get out of it, but maybe you've estimated the price to be a little incorrect on something so illiquid like a real estate transaction. And that can right, be good and bad. I'm not bad. talking about it good or bad. I'm just That's talking what I'm about saying. That can be good and bad. It could be worth more than you're, you're guessing, but the market is so illiquid for something like that versus stocks. I hear you. You push the button. Right. It's in your account. It's in cash straight away. Um, and then you were just talking about the Dow and kind of the divergences versus the Dow versus the yes. S&P. Yes, um, look at the IWM. Yeah. The IWM is just kind of stuck in this range. It didn't get even close to the recent high yeah. of 158. And it's in 155.49. You were talking about yesterday in terms of the different stocks, in terms of we had Boeing putting so much of the emphasis into the Dow for so long. And then yesterday, you just said, I mean, United Health was up huge. Um, you had uh, Goldman Sachs got quite a bounce as well and, yesterday. And your, your NH is up again today. Goldman Sachs yep. finally woke up and said, oh, oh, rally. You know, <laughs> Goldman Sachs, Boeing, United Health, all of those. I mean, you look at three stocks in the Dow, that's 10% of the whole index, and all of those were up mammoth numbers um, yesterday. So you can and see why. And the same today. Yeah, yeah. the same ones in yeah. fact and in fact that's one of the reasons why i've said that the dow is the dow 30 i don't i don't want to call it the dow jones industrials i want to say it's the dow 30 there are they're, they're like three industrials there you know this is a this is a a mix of what is being considered core american products home depot you know this is this is very important sure but I, it, and it, even it walgreens is, boots um which is remarkable uh there and there as well they got quite a pop right. but pulled so, back almost and finished the day in the negative but same thing i mean industrial walgreens you know so the xlis the s p select industrial spider also not exactly the same but it's it, it represents something a little different because i think this particular mix is telling me more about the industrials. If you had to include the United Technologies, okay. the companies that have been dragging the Dow down, that has not made an all-time high. Yeah. So you've got to just, the picture is, what are you looking at and what do you see for that particular uh, individual uh, chart formation that, that is being formed? Yeah, a little bit of divergences hitting the market here and there. Uh, so I do, I do expect, sorry, I just want to say that I no, do please. expect that there's some kind of a topping action going on here on the shorter term. But on a purely practical level, I'll do this. I'll, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll give a little lesson here. Let's do it. I like it. Here's, 
You see, actually, let me grab this chart right here. I think this is the one. I'm going to open that up. It's a good yeah. time for lessons when you get stocks at all-time highs. And I mean, you know, I mean, right. seriously, in terms so, of what's going on with bonds. I wanted and to make it. I, I had that webinar, my last webinar that I did for subscribers. Yes. And in that webinar, I spent quite. I, I always talk about the nine-period moving average and the fourteen-period moving average. I just these are part of my vernacular. Everybody has their special things. I know Tom always looks at volume. Everybody has their thing that is their their. Uh, um, we can call it the, the bread and butter sure. tool that they look at. This is their wheelhouse. So I'm looking at this and I'm looking at it and saying, well, that nine period exponential moving average is so high from the 14 period moving average that to cross negative, look what you'd have to do. We can talk about that when we come back. It would back. take this a lot, right? Practical, yeah. And folks, come on over to the front page of TFNN. There is that webinar right there. We'll talk about it after the work, after the break as well. The Tide from Basil Chapman last month. Check it out. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. And just, Basil, before you finish, as you were talking about that webinar, folks, coming over to the front page, Basil doing a great job filling in for Tom this week. Tom will be back on Monday. Basil's doing his show at noon. He talks about so much because he's got so much information. And this is just a sneak peek of those archived webinars that sub subscribers gain access to. And there's that webinar, The Tide, on June 12th, Basil's talking about. 
uh, let alone he's got a few others in there that you can check out. You subscribe, you get 30 days money back guarantee, and uh, all these 90 minute webinars. You can get in there, watch as many times as you want, and get up to speed with that Chapman wave. So go ahead, Basil. So this has got no lettering at all. This is just basically looking at moving averages. And you could use, uh, people use all different kinds of moving average. I just say, be consistent in whatever you use. Don't keep changing it because you're going to confuse yourself. Stick with what you got and just learn what the parameter, parameters are within it. And my point, my only point here is, uh, yes, I've got, this is the SPY. I thought people, some people might not get the S&P if they're listening to the show, they might yeah, it's easy to go SPY, which is the S&P uh, deposited receipts, and uh, it's really basically the S&P in the ETF form. So what we're looking at here is is trading at 299.85, up 54 cents, uh, up 0.18 percent. But you see how far it is away. The price is away from this green line, the nine-period moving average. Yes. And I use exponential moving averages. You can use anything, but just be consistent. And the bottom one, the black one, is the 14-period moving average. Look at what it takes to go from very positive. Um, if you remember, this is the April high, and uh, fortunately in the, SM, in the Dow, we got short the day before the high and rode it all the way down, reversed to the long side at the bottom. But look how long it took. This is not a timing mechanism. This is a confirming mechanism. So look how long it took before you got a crossover to negative from the nine-period moving average to the 14-period moving average. But look at the points. You went from right here on the uh, 3rd of May at 294.34, a little below the high that was made two days before. So two, we call, we call, let's call it 294, and you had to go down right here. You had to go down to 282 before you got to a negative there. crossover. Yeah. So my point here is I didn't want to be in any hurry to tell subscribers, and hey, whoa, this is getting kind of toppy. We've got all the resistance levels. Get out. And it's a, no, what we've we've done is we had lightened up on the way. We've still got a good position, and what we're looking at I'm using I, this is using the S and P now or the spy. We actually long the the Dow, the 200% long. We have a position there of the Dow, but it's the same principle. So what we are looking at here, this is now in leg F. Usually a leg F in the Chapman Wayne methodology says, wow, you're either going to recycle higher. Well, this is where you've got to be very careful. We're looking at a doji, three doji candles so far. If there's a little doji candle or a down candle today, maybe Monday we start a little bit of a pullback. But look what you've got to do. You've got to go to the green line, which is 297. So that's uh, that's two points. Then you've got to go down to 295. So that's another. Um, you've got six points. All, uh, no, where we're the higher today is 300 exactly. Round number. 300.00. Isn't that incredible? All time right. high. You make a round number at, at, a, um, uh, at 300. Anyway, so um, this is just you've got a lot to go to the downside. So you'll have time to get out. If you want to go short, you'll have time to go short. Just think about how strong this is, just based visually on the technique that I'm using here, saying that not, you haven't even gone back to the nine period moving average. You're still above it. You've got all that time. And then you still have to cross negative, And then you finally have to go underneath. You have to get the nine crossing the 14 to really get a confirmation. So I think this is all going to take time. And what I said to subscribers is, either we get a really sharp news event today that just really tanks the market or over the weekend. and it, But more likely, it's just, Maybe we're going to start to get lower highs and, and slightly lower lows as, as a process evolves and sudden spikes to the upside, maybe even making slightly higher highs. But the, we have to wait for these moving averages to actually turn down. That was the tide. That's what I was talking about in my webinar, that in the tide, try to identify when you've come off the bottom from low tide moving up to high tide and when you're going from high tide going down. And if you're able to do that, it really gives you a perspective of saying, all right, don't, don't, get, don't hurry. There's plenty of time. Just they be tell careful. You, they tell you in swimming, don't swim against the tide, right? That's, that's the cardinal rule number <laughs> one. I, yeah. You're saying, you're saying that to one of the worst swimmers ever. I used, to, I used to love diving. I used to love body surfing. But I'm not a good swimmer. 
And uh, I couldn't even tell you. I was once almost drowning talking to a friend of mine oh, and too embarrassed to say that I couldn't feel the bottom and I was running out of energy. Um, and I was <laughs> wow. still kept talking until, thank God, I finally felt a little <laughs> sand <laughs> the at last the bottom. moment before I, I was you too screamed for help, to right? Say, I was too embarrassed to say, could you just lean over and give me an arm? Give me a hand here, right? <laughs> and me. they do say, folks, you ever get caught in a tide, that tide going out, you swim sideways parallel with the beach because you don't swim against the tide because you make no Absolutely. progress and you just tire yourself out. Seems like a great analogy it's for the like market. like the market. Exactly. The market is, you, you go against the tide, it's very costly. That's right. So, uh, yeah. so how so about young brands, Basil? I know uh, we got one of our tigers in the den talking about young brands. I saw you pulling it up there briefly before. So Young Brands is a very, and actually let's just do it on the one that we were looking at now without all my notation and everything. Okay. Look, this is a very good example. So Young Brands, you see it's making slightly higher highs. This is the daily chart. Young Brands is uh, trading at 110.74, down 0.76. And now you can see more, first of all, we were using the nine period moving average you were, I call it walking the nine period moving average. Actually, it was leaping the nine period moving average. Then all of a sudden, and it's amazing how markets make this arch, this rounding top. It's getting harder and harder to go above. This is an automated 111.44 high, and it closed yesterday at 111.51, just above it. And today, it went even higher at 111.82. And now there's a red candle touching the nine period moving average. So. I'm looking at this saying, okay, there's a good chance now that the 14 period moving average of 109.99, let's call it 110, could be touched. And if it closes above that, there's a really good chance that this left side low of 108.72 on the 1st of July would be touched. So this is just purely using the technique that I just uh, des uh, uh, described a moment ago. And now if you go to the charts, I used to have this notated, I simply don't have it now, but in the, in the, monthly chart the big question is is this a new leg b and there's a technique that i i discovered a long time ago that i call the chapman wave instant restart which is the reason why i say that at a peak d that's where other things can happen but if you look at the MACD, look how strong the MACD was in the monthly chart when it made this little top back in the month of september of 2019 as 78.14 and then it went it didn't even touch the nine period moving average so i could have said e f and then you got your big decline and this could be a to b but i like to be as conservative as possible in my notations because it gives you a heads up to say okay well, you don't have any sell signal but what are you looking for well i'm looking for the month of uh, july if there is a doji candle if it starts to stall then I'm going to be looking for a deeper pullback. But so far, the monthly chart is still very strong. I'm calling it a leg D, could be an alternative count. And then I have to go to the weekly and the daily to do the analysis. Quite a year that Young Brands has had, man. Look that at that, all time high Seriously. today. Quite yeah. a chart. All right, folks, we got the market just kind of hanging around at highs. Dow up 130 right now. S&P's positive by three, NASDAQ positive by 10. Come on back, folks. Basil and I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What should you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877 5 if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman. Basil, we're going to give a little Las Vegas update here for the World Series of Poker. I play a little poker myself, as some may know. So they got the big main event going on out there. They've been showing some of this on ESPN, if you had a chance to check it out. Still going on. This is the one that they usually cover, the main event of the World Series. Doyle Brunson winning it a couple times back in the day. $10,000 buy-in for this tournament. You have 8,500 people creating a prize pool of $80 million in this is one that, turn. Is that a record? Uh, just shy of it, Basil. They had 8,700 oh. people, I believe, back in maybe 2006. Um, but poker on the rise. These numbers, I mean, and what happened That's was... fantastic. Yeah, back in 2006, online was just booming like never seen before, I think it was. They reached 8,700. This number has been rising in terms of, uh, and that's a good hint for the economy itself, as in people being out in Vegas, gambling. Yeah, I think so. Definitely. You used, to, you used to be a champ. Are you still playing? I still play occasionally. The online spectrum is a little bit segmented in terms of, uh, it's legal right now in Las Vegas. Online gambling has more coming to be. It's legal in New Jersey, I believe. Atlantic City, they're doing some business in terms of online gambling. Uh, nothing like this one tournament, though. They're down to 35 players. They've been playing for about seven days now. And uh, the winner of this tournament, there are the chip stacks. You got Nicholas Marchington. He is leading with almost 40 million in chips. I believe you yeah. started this tournament with 60,000 chips. So these guys, anybody so, left. And there's a qualifier to get in. You cannot the, get in unless you are. The only qualifier, level? Basil, is $10,000 cash oh, okay. upon All payment. Right. And uh, the, the winner to put the payouts with this many people. People. How about $10 million for the winner, whoever walks away? Quite a price tag. And even if you make the final nine, you're guaranteed a million dollars. And even these, these people there. And uh, at this point, it's all guys. It's all a, a, a gentleman-dominated sport for whatever reason. Um, but $261,000, they are already guaranteed. Decent payout, but they should. Because coming out of 8,500 people, you're down to 35 left. And, uh, man, these, these, these 35 guys, quite the anxiety, quite the excitement. Wish them all good luck. And... Uh, uh, if you get a chance to check it out, folks, nothing like reality TV when people are playing for $10 million, seeing those that emotions. That is a real thing, for it sure. It is. So back yeah. to the market. What else we got um, that we're looking so at, Basil? I, in terms I think it's kind of important at this particular uh, moment to be thinking that Amazon, uh, with Amazon Prime coming up, yes, I think Monday. Amazon is like... It's just a whisker away from the all-time high. In this particular pattern that I like to look at, it's like a V-shaped pattern, but I really, what I normally do is I grab the top and the bottom and I draw in a rectangle, and then I make that rectangle smaller and smaller, thinking that the price, if it doesn't take out the low in a short period of time, will work its way to the top 
and very often it does it in a shorter time frame a, a shorter time frame goes to at least a d or an e which is exactly what we've got here look in the hundred in the Weekly chart, look what happened. You've gone from the high of 2050.50 in September down to the low round number of 1307 uh, back in December. And now you've got peak A, B, C, D. Then there's another little cup formation. And now you're almost back to that level. This is where yeah. uh, you've got to, this is going to be very important for Amazon. And so far, it's acted very well. And I, I think that that's telling us also a lot about the economy. And that's telling us why there are so many. Uh, retail stores that are failing. Yeah, and you can, you know, it would make sense just uh, anecdotally, as in they have their prime day, which is prime days, Monday and Tuesday, July 15th, 16th. I believe the trillion dollar mark for the market cap for Amazon, somewhere around 2047, maybe. I know they just eclipsed it briefly with that 2050 run, so it would seem fitting, right? They have prime day, they push it out, they become a trillion dollar company. That all seems to gel very easily in terms of how that could occur. And it's created an entirely new way of looking at the economy. Every every hundred years, at the turn of the century, we get some phenomenon: photography in the 1900s, just engines, electricity, and this is the age of of basically the internet. And it's because of that, we've got a whole new way of looking at so many different things. And as I said yesterday, Jeff Bezos says, I think is. Right. We talk about prime. He's prime in this particular move. He's <laughs> he's ready. Changed the industry in each sector. Yes. Yeah. That, that is quite a phenomenon. I mean, Amazon Web Services, right? Just a dominant cloud player. That is not going anywhere anytime soon, let alone the warehouses and, and just the products and the, the delivery vans that they've built out now. They have their own planes, right? I mean, it's um, nothing is going to stop them, it seems, as this uh, technology drive marches on. Yeah. Right. So what I, I thought we would do is just for just briefly, we we'll look at gold and just see what's happening. I, I remember nice. you know, I draw in this rectangle formation. I said yeah. in my Chapman Wave methodology, something gold hanging tough. And I show show uh, very often is that if you get this like we call it like a flagpole, this this big move up, and then you suddenly get a move down. You can define it by drawing in a rectangle, and it is amazing. Even with gold, everyone thought, oh, gold is going to break out. Oops, gold is going to break down. It is stuck between 1384 and 1442, and that can stay for a while. And if you look at the dollar, the dollar is also kind of stuck in this range, holding very nicely considering what's going on, but sure. it isn't going anywhere. It's just kind of stuck in this range. And I think that that's important. And we were speaking about crude oil. Remember, we were looking for that leg D. Well, we've got the leg D, and the, the, the 200 period moving average is so powerful in, in my work. I, you don't ever need it. But when it comes into focus, then it really comes into focus. And you can see the W formation that's forming in, in crude oil in the weekly chart. So the, the, the magnet of this area around about, let's call it 60, it's easier to do that, means that it can go down, it can go up. It's probably going to come around, stay around 60 for a little while longer. But if at any point in the next three weeks, if it starts to move towards the 60, 62.50 area, that 64.83 level in the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart starts to become a magnet. So I like to use these. There's the same rectangle formation we were looking at. So yes. you're stuck. It could come, could come back, hang around you a little while. But those are the levels I like to look at, and those are the patterns that repeat over and over and over. And if you get to use them and get really comfortable with it, then it doesn't. You, know, you, you don't have a big question mark hanging over the, the, the chart saying, "Where are we going?" It says. This is the pattern that could most likely form, and if it breaks out of that pattern, you know that you that's very important. Yeah, that's, and that gold, uh, I mean, if you're a gold bull out there, Tom had talked about it last week um, and the weeks prior, in terms of maybe looking for a pullback, being okay with a pullback, being okay with that type of consolidation in that box, because, man, that run that it had from under 1,300, yeah, to talking about highs that we hadn't seen in, what, six, seven years in terms of the numbers we were hitting and 1,400 and change in gold. There it is. Um, yeah, there it is. The yeah. last high was at 1,453 level way back in uh, 2016. If I squeeze this monthly chart even more, yeah. look at this. You've just been tumbling. I mean, you, yeah. Right. You're, you're really going back the there. 2013, 2014. You want to talk about a consolidation, right, Basil? How about that box of consolidation almost from 2013 to 2019, right where we're sitting? Well, I'm going to show you something interesting. I've got this as a speculation that if at any point gold actually starts to trade 
in the next two years above 1600, 1650, there could be a huge cup or more like a bowl okay. formation that says you got this upside trend line and that could take you all the way back to the September highs of 2011. And uh, I'm so going to have to listen to your cool. interview with Tom next week to see because he's in that ballpark that those all time highs, not not right now, but they're in play if it really makes a run because of that type of consolidation. It's had for so long. Folks, we'll be right back in three minutes. Come on back and join us. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Been a pretty tame hour with markets just hanging around positive territory. We got the Dow up 120 run right now. S&P is positive by three. NASDAQ positive by 11. And I mentioned it briefly, folks. Head on over to the front page of TFNN. Basil's going to be back here at noon. Sign up for the opening call. You'll get 30 days, 30 day money back guarantee. You'll be ready for action for that weekend. And of course, you get access to all those archive webinars along with Basil, whether he's putting out updates on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, the whole deal. So, Basil, what are we talking about? At noon. I know we already got Tigers asking questions about things we're going to be covering in the den at noon. What are you going to be looking at? Yeah, so a couple of things. I had uh, a couple of questions come in. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the VIX 
uh, what I'd be looking for if there was a downturn, you know, what the VIX needs to be doing to, to really confirm that you're going to be going down. I'm going to talk, in fact, now that I've spoken to you about it, I'm going to do the same thing with the moving average. I'll, I'll do that in my show, talk a little bit more about it, just to show it's just another tool people can use. And the other thing is, uh, I just had an email from someone, rarely emails me, but he only emails me when he has... Uh, some kind of a short or a buy on the market, and he just emailed me to say had a, had a, a short a set, what does it say put an order to short the S, the spy at 300 and it hit 300. Funny how that 300 hit to the penny. We had lots so, of round numbers everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I said I, I, I lost track of my round numbers yesterday. I said to somebody, yeah, the Dow's at 30,000. I said, no, wait, the S&P is at 3,000. The Dow's at 27,000. Easy to get mixed up with these numbers. Lots of round so numbers, quickly. for sure. Yes. So I'll be talking about that. I'll also be talking about just the scenario that we're looking at here, how there's a kind of a diversion going on, and that I would not be surprised if that we get signals from maybe the IWM, the Russell 2000, and the S&P earlier next week than the Dow to say, hey, there's a little bit of a consolidation going on. We'll see what happens. Perfect. Well, Basil, I appreciate you filling in this week for Tom. Always a pleasure, man. I really enjoy it. Always like being with you. It's Thank you great. very much, Tom. And Thank good you, job. man. Folks, check out that opening call, front page of TFNN. Basil coming up at noon. Of course, we got Dave White at 2, Larry Pesamento filling in at 3. Have a great Friday.